Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't this game have support for Tandy sound and graphics? No? What do you mean, no? I know I've seen screenshots of this IBM published game which don't look anything like this. Uh, oh. Hang on. Does this game have support for PC Junior sound and graphics? Okay, that complicates things a bit. Fortunately, I am resourceful and have fans who help point things out to me, even when I don't ask. In any case, today on Ancient DOS Games, we're taking a look at a game that's surprisingly recognizable despite how ancient it really is, Alley Cat. This is a game I never knew about growing up, but to this day has managed to stay fresh in the minds of many PC gamers who've been at it since the 80s due to its quirky nature and surprising amount of replayability despite its simplicity. Actually, if you want to get really technical, it's not even a DOS game, as the original PC release was a booter disc. However, most copies floating around the net nowadays have been converted to run straight from the DOS prompt. Which may seem a bit strange for a commercially released title, but we'll get into that, don't worry. Despite having some very tricky controls, it's actually quite the fun game, and I never really ran into any major issues with it while playing. I will say that I saw pretty much everything the game had to offer within just half an hour, but despite that, it remained interesting, and I may come back to it every now and then in the future when I have short amounts of time to kill. Alley Cat was developed by Synapse Software, though most of the work on the game was done by the late Bill Williams, and while the original Atari 8-bit version was published in 1983, the PC port was published by IBM in 1984. It's a one-player action game with support for CGA 4 color and PC Junior 16 color graphics running at 320 by 200 resolution. This distinction is important as typically PC Junior stuff is compatible with Tandy systems, but this is one instance where it's not. In fact, even if you manage to get the video working, you may not trigger the PC Junior audio to work and may just get the PC speaker. And that said, the only PC Junior sound in the entire program is the title screen music, but since it sounds numerous times better than the PC speaker rendition, I'd say it's worth the extra effort to get it working completely, not just partially. I should also point out that while the PC Junior video mode is capable of 16 colors at a time, it's still only using the CGA graphics just with palette changes, so only four colors ever get used at once. As for its current release date, well... It's actually been a while since I've had to use the ambiguous tag, but yeah, I wasn't able to find out the exact legal state of this game. Here's the thing. Many fully legitimate DOS gaming websites have this game available for download, such as the DOS Games website at www.dosgames.com, with each of these sites listing the game as freeware. But I've noticed that almost every copy available from legitimate websites was originally pirated. I then thought, well, maybe I could just ask the original author about that, which is when I discovered he passed away in the late 90s. Okay, maybe Synapse Software was still around. Nope, purchased by Bruderbun in the mid 80s and shut down a year later. I didn't even realize that company was that old. So that means the current license holder is either IBM or the learning company, and they may not even be aware of it. 
Unless Bill did some sort of transfer of ownership of the game at some earlier point or something, but I can't find any evidence of anything like that ever happening. Plus, if something like that did happen, you'd think there'd be some official text included with these free releases. But as it stands, every quote, freeware copy out there tends to have a different executable name and different changes internally to convert it from a PC booter game to a DOS game. This is partly why I'm recommending the copy from the DOS Games website, because it seems to be the least messed with and is completely compatible with the patches I'm going to recommend later in the video to get the PC Junior features working with DOSBox. As for physical copies, I don't have a clue. I tried to look for some, but it came up empty. Given how well remembered and old this game is, I'm willing to bet if you do find a copy out there, regardless of what system it's for, it's not going to be cheap. Maybe unless it's in really bad shape or something. So the basic premise of this game is that you play the role of Freddy the Cat, who has a mad crush on a local feline known as Felicia, who in turn isn't really too interested in Freddy, but feels if he could actually show some spunk and be daring for her, then that might change her mind. Thus, Freddy actually has to prove his worth to Felicia by doing daring things in the local condominium complex before she'll let him come up to her for a kiss. And even then, he'll have to dodge her six brothers in the process. Actually, before I go on, I want to quickly point out that pretty much everything alive in this game has a name. With the exception of the dogs in the kennel and Felicia's brothers, or anything that has more than four of. So, just to interject that trivia, I'll be calling everything by name as we go along, as the best way to describe how to play this game is, well, basically to describe each of the seven scenes you can play through. Though before you get started, you have to choose your difficulty level. The only thing the difficulty selection changes is what level you start on, as each time you get a kiss from Felicia, you advance to the next level. The controls are simple, but very finicky if you're not used to them. You move Freddy around with the arrow keys, using up to jump and down to drop down from things. The longer you run in a particular direction for, the faster you'll move. And the faster you're moving, the higher you can jump. When you jump, you maintain the inertia you had prior, however, there's a special kind of jump you can execute from a standstill if you manage to push jump and left or right at the same time, allowing you to jump further sideways from a standstill than would normally be possible if you simply walked for a moment and then jumped. You also can use the ALT key to perform specific actions under specific circumstances, which I'll cover when it's relevant. The screen you start on is the alley outside of the appropriately named Catalina Condominium Complex. Your goal at this point is to get up over the fence and climb into one of the main rooms through an open window. To get over the fence, you need to jump in the trash cans, but you have to be mindful of Fletcher, another alley cat who pops his head out of the trash cans. If you touch Fletcher, he'll knock you down and make a noise which summons a vicious dog named Bowser Von Spike. I swear I'm not making that name up, guys. <laughs> in any case, if Bowser touches you, he'll rip you apart and you'll lose a life, with your lives conveniently posted on the fence behind you, along with your score represented as a telephone number. But just ignore the hyphen and it'll make perfect sense. Once you're past the fence, you start jumping around the clotheslines and need to make it into an open window, although if you fall off the clotheslines and back down to the ground, you'll come back around to the trash cans to try jumping up again. This would be a good moment to point out that you only lose a life in this game when you get hurt. As the old saying goes, cats always land on their feet, so anything in this game which simply involves falling won't lose a life. While on the clothesline, you also have to be mindful of the condo owners tossing stuff out of the open windows to try and stop the commotion going on outside. Plus there's three mice running around, Hick, Dick, and Doc, who are worth a tiny amount of points to catch, but if you let them just walk up to you, they'll squeak and startle you, causing you to fall. Once you're through a window, you'll be presented with one of five different rooms. The kennel, the aviary, the pantry, the library, or the aquarium. The kennel's probably the hardest of the bunch, as you need to drink up all the milk bowls belonging to the sleeping dogs by using the action button. But when you're near these dogs, they start to wake up. If one wakes up completely, it'll catch you and you'll lose a life. While in any of these rooms, you also have to be mindful of the mad housekeeping broom, which will go after you when it has nothing to sweep up. So by moving to the bottom of the screen and laying down lots and lots of paw prints, you'll keep the broom busy so it won't be as much of a bother. Another room to deal with is the aviary. In here, there's a bird in the cage which you need to catch. 
But first, you need to knock the cage off the table to set it free. This would be a good moment to point out that you want to avoid the windows you come in from. If you accidentally jump or get knocked into the open window, you'll fall out back into the alley. Also, whenever you clear the goals of a screen, Felicia will gauge how well you did, mostly to do with how fast you were, and you'll get scored based on this. The pantry's a weird one. There's a ginormous hunk of Swiss cheese in here and four mice crawling all over it by the names of Eeny, Meeny, Miny, and Mo. While Freddy can grab onto each hole and jump around, I found out much later after capturing footage that you can also use the action button to crawl through the holes, as each hole connects with another one. The irony being that the holes in Swiss cheese are actually caused by bubbles, not tunnels. But then this kind of thinking was common even in cartoons, so whatever, we'll roll with it. The library is probably the easiest room to deal with. It's owned by an old gentleman known as Nick Chromancer, whom we never see. And all you have to do is grab his three rare plants known as Segolian Dandelions. Protecting the plants is a spider named... I... Er, Okay, the spider technically doesn't have a name, but is referred to as a distant cousin to the salivating spiders of Sith, which I'm going to guess is bad or something. The last of the five rooms you'll see is the aquarium, which is home to a fishbowl, which somehow is big enough for Freddy to not only swim around in, but it holds 12 fish and a bunch of electric eels. All you gotta do is jump in the fishbowl and eat the fish. But if you stay underwater for too long, Freddy will drown, so make sure to come up for air if it's taking a bit of effort to catch all the fish. When you complete a room and receive a score from Felicia, she'll be appear in the windows and you'll be able to attempt to go to her. However, the room she's in is not only guarded by her six brothers, but also by a bunch of cupids who can shoot different colored arrows which alter the floors between solid hearts you can walk on and cracked hearts which you'll fall through. You can also find gift boxes on the screen, one for each room you completed since the last time you kissed Felicia, which you can pick up and then place near one of her brothers to distract them away from the action. You also get double the normal bonus if you bring a gift up to Felicia, but oddly if you actually drop the gift and Felicia picks it up, it'll kill the score multiplier. Or something like that. I think this is a case where the manual and what's happening with the score may not actually be on the same page. Now mind you, clever viewers will have noticed there's only five brothers on screen. There is a sixth brother, but he can only come out if you stand around on the bottom floor for too long. If you fall out of the room, you'll have to go complete another one of the condo rooms to get here again. If you get to the top and meet up with Felicia, she'll give Freddy a kiss, a whole ton of points, and then you move on to the next level. And that's pretty much all there is to this game, though I do have two extremely helpful tips for anyone who wants to give this game a shot. The first is that you absolutely cannot jump over the dog without a running start, so don't even try unless you can get your speed up. The other tip is that the moment a window finishes opening, an object is pretty much guaranteed to fly out, and it's going to go straight for Freddy. So if you're trying to squeeze inside as fast as possible, chances are you're not going to make it. So always be patient and wait until that object flies out of the window before you try to jump in. Overall, Alley Cat is a fun, although repetitive and short game. But given when it came out, it's incredibly impressive, both technically and graphically. Sure, there were far better looking games on other computers and game consoles, but the PC had to start somewhere. And games like these helped to show that it was very possible to have fun games to play on these systems. I'd say it's worth checking out no matter what, but don't expect it to hold your interest for very long. If anything, it's a game that seems best suited nowadays for quick 15 to 30 minute sessions every once in a while when you're bored. Provided you set it up properly for DOSBox. There's a few extra steps beyond these simple configuration details, so let's go over the whole process. Firstly, you can leave cycle set to auto and you should be good. Secondly, you want to set the machine type to PC Junior specifically, not Tandy. If you set it to Tandy, you'll just get the CGA graphics. You also need to force Tandy sound support to on, rather than leave it set to auto, as the auto setting doesn't seem to combine properly with the PC Junior machine setting for whatever reason. You'll also need to patch whatever version you end up with to run in DOSBox. 
Now, someone on the Vogons forums made a patch a while back, which should work with most of the copies you can find online nowadays, and you'll find a link to the forum thread regarding this patch in the video description and below the video on my website. Now, you'll want to scroll through the thread to find the latest version, and then download and extract the zip file contents to wherever you put the game. Then, while in DOSBox, run the batch file which patches the program. Provided the copy of the game you have is compatible, it should take a brief moment to do its thing, then give you an OK message. At which point, you, when you start the game up, it will actually ask a question about TV support, to which you want to answer yes. And following all of these steps should get you both the PC Junior graphics and the PC Junior title screen music working in DOSBox. Anywho. That's all for today's episode of Ancient DOS Games. Next month is Edutainment Month, and so for episode 184, going up on Saturday, April 2nd, we'll be taking a look at a game which takes place underwater in a submarine. If you think you know of an educational game like that, then be sure to send your guests to ADG at Pixelships.com and stay tuned to see how they were able to turn a concept like that into a learning experience.